insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 97, Epic Rematch and Bennett's Battle. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my loving and affectionate co-host, Michelle Whalen. Aww. See, you went off script you there. You went off script. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day, happy sweetheart. Happy Valentine's Day, my love. How are you doing today? Well, besides my eye tearing up, I think I'm doing okay. You should not be crying on Valentine's <laughs> Day unless they're tears of joy. <laughs> they, they must be because I don't know why my one eye is tearing. So if I keep, you know, breaking out a tissue to, to dry my eye, you'll know why. So uh, we kind of had a unplanned hiatus from last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we had some inclement weather. We had right. another uh, uh, event that we were doing. Actually, we were doing a D&D right. session with, with Sam. Mm-hmm. And we normally do those on Sunday, but because we were getting snow, right. he wound up coming over on Saturday. And we did it Saturday, so we were going to push the podcast till Sunday. And then when I woke up on Sunday, I was just not feeling podcasty on Sunday. <laughs> You weren't feeling podcastish. I was not podcastish, <laughs> no. So it happens. We kind of had to uh, take a mulligan on that one. Yeah. And we're back this week. Um, still some, a lot of news to right. go over this week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so today in our Disney Detective, we're going to talk about uh, ABC tapping the Once Upon a Time creators to develop a new plot. Mm-hmm. Then Disney's California Adventure will be opening. They're bringing back a limited number of employees for whatever this opening is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Then in our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy, we get rumors of an Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader rematch. (laughs) Should be interesting coming out of the new show. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we talk about Gina Carano and uh, some controversial remarks that have cost her her role on The Mandalorian. In our entertainment news, we talk Tony Bennett's battle with Alzheimer's and uh, some information on Jeffrey Dean Morgan from Walking Dead joining Jansen Ackles Mm -hmm. in The Boys. Yeah. So that should be very cool. Two shows we both love. Mm Mm-hmm. We'll finish up with our insightful picks of the week, and we do have an afterthought this week to uh, to go over mm-hmm. before we wrap things yep. up. So anything else before we get started? Nope. I think that's everything. All right. Let's get into it. Okay. Sped that up yet? I have to do that. Too. <laughs> and you didn't do any of the show plugs beforehand. So. That's all right. We'll do those. We'll at the do end. those at the end. Um, so ABC has now tapped the Once Upon a Time creators to develop Epic. Um, so there's some talk going around that ABC has uh, gone to the longtime collaborators of Adam Horowitz and Edward uh, Kitsis. Um, who are responsible for the hit Once Upon a Time. And according to The Hollywood Reporter, they are working on a fairy tale anthology called Epic. Um, it, you know, like Once Upon a Time, Epic will follow probably the same kind of recipe, incorporating other Disney characters to represent um, a reinvented or reimagined world for them to inhabit. 
Um, so obviously they have a massive cast of characters to, you know, to choose from across the pro- properties um, with endless story ideas. You also have to remember that Princess Leia and Shuri are also part of you know, the Disney family too. So now you could, you know, there's so many more characters that they could bring into this. Um, so they've actually been in, in a deal with Disney that was renewed in 2018. And uh, Shonda Rhimes, who was working with ABC and developing, she's actually now working with Netflix. So they're kind of the top showrunners that Disney is, is and ABC is going to. Um, they obviously came up with Once Upon a Time, which was a huge hit. They were also the minds behind Lost, and they also came up with the revamping of Apple's Amazing Stories um, as well. So not much is really known what the story is going to be. It could follow the same formula to kind of bridge the gap between fantasy and reality, um, you know, bringing the characters you know, into a more modern story time. So again, not much is, is really known. Um, so as it stands, uh, ABC has ordered four pilots for consideration for the fall television season. Obviously, because of COVID, that's been playing a big role into, you know, the decision making of what new shows they're going to do and the safety protocols and, you know, when they can actually fill them. So should be interesting to uh, to see what, what happens. So now, is this an independent project, or is it an offshoot of Once Upon a Time? It's Are a completely related? different completely different show. Interesting. And who do you think deserves some, uh, some attention here from a character standpoint? Hmm, I don't know. It would kind of be interesting to see if maybe, like, character lesser known characters, maybe kind of come to the the forefront obviously once upon a time you know they did snow white they did uh sleeping beauty um they did rapunzel tinkerbell the seven dwarves um you know interesting take on beauty and the beast um with different characters so i think it would be nice maybe to do some of the more modern ones or some of the lesser known you know ones out there. So right. I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Tell us about Disney's California adventure reopening. Yeah. So some Disney fans will finally have a chance to return to California adventure park next month for a limited time experience about a year after the entertainment giants theme park closed because of the pandemic. Disneyland resort president Ken uh, Potrock announced uh, plans on Monday in a letter to workers sent in honor of Dis- uh, California Adventure's 20th anniversary. Um, obviously, Disney is not yet permitted by the state to open, um, to fully reopen uh, for the park's attraction, so the event won't be like a typical visit to the theme park. Instead, the park will offer guests food and beverages, merchandise, and carefully crafted entertainment experiences. Uh, that's what Pot Rock had uh, said in the letter, which was reviewed by um, CNN Business. Um, with this initiative, as well as the recent restart of outdoor dining in downtown Disney after California's stay-at-home order was lifted last month, around a 1,000 cast members will be able to return to work. Obviously, tens of thousands of the company's workers have been furloughed or laid off since last year because of the prolonged exposure. Um, so with limited capacity and enhanced health and safety measures in place, guests once again will get to step into a magical Disney environment, an environment that will provide memorable and fun experiences for our guests um, that our guests are craving, he had said. Um, so there are going to be a ticketed event, which will take place multiple days a week, beginning in mid-March. The limited reopening points to the potential beginning of a recovery for Disney's California theme park operations after the pandemic hammered the company's bottom line. Um, Disney obviously had closed all of its theme parks last spring with the pandemic, and only some of them have opened. Um Disneyland had opened just their shopping area um, and then had started opening some of the food areas, but then some of those had to close when California kept going back and forth with their, uh, you know, the park openings. And at one point they had 
kind of opened uh, California Adventure for a little bit, and then they had to close it. So now they're, you know, going to try and open it up again. So I guess we'll see, you know, a little bit at a time, I guess. So I assume this has to do with California loosening their mm-hmm. restrictions at this point Right, in time. right. Is that a result of <clears throat> actual uh, infection numbers going down? Is it correlated to the number of vaccines out? Have they released any information? They, from they haven't now? really said, um, you know, it, it did say that it, they are reaching lower cases. So I guess as the numbers drop down, things are kind of slowly opening up to see that the rates stay down. So they're probably just being very cautious at this point. So so now this is specifically California Adventure. Just California Adventure, nothing with Disneyland, um, you know. So I'm guessing, again, they're probably going to have the same type of thing where you can walk around certain areas of the park, you can do certain dining experiences, and they might be putting on some sort of entertainment show for you to watch, but obviously you're not able to get on any of the rides. But we saw images you know where they've prepared just like they have in in florida with all of the plexiglass and all the safety so they're they're ready for the park to be open to to have the safety measures and to have people spaced out and everything they're just waiting for the state to say you know to give them the go-ahead so the article alludes to it being a ticketed event right does that like we've gone to ticketed party events Mm -hmm. is it is it that type yeah, of Yeah, there was event? nothing that, that said how much it was going to cost. I can't imagine it, you know, $10, $15, you know, something, uh, you know, pretty low. Because I know... No, is this in addition to a park ticket? This would be your park ticket. This okay. would be your, your event, a special, you know, this way they know how many people are coming in. It's probably something where you maybe get two or three hours uh, so you it's know, a at select, a time, select days, mm-hmm. right? Uh, limited capacity, mm-hmm. and it's by in advance with right. essentially reservations, right? In advance. Right, right. Interesting. Well, I guess you got to start somewhere, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, this is a good sign that we're moving in the right direction. Absolutely. So that was all we had for our Disney detective mm-hmm. this week. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back with our tales from the edge of the galaxy. For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Go for Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. (laughs) So Disney's Obi-Wan Kenobi will see its hero face off against Darth Vader. And depending on how it happens, that rematch rematch could break a Star Wars record. The upcoming show will take place 10 years after Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, where after defeating Anakin Skywalker on Mustafar, Obi-Wan Kenobi went into exile on Tatooine. Um, committing to watching over Anakin and Padme's son, Luke. And as far as, you know, viewers know, Obi-Wan spent the entire time on the desert planet, but that may change in the show um, because of a promised rematch with Darth Vader. So um, 
we obviously know that Ian McGregor, as well as Hayden Christensen, will be returning for the show, um, and he'll be donning the Darth Vader suit and helmet for the first time since Reve- since Revenge of the Sith. Sith. Woo. Uh, the specifics of his role are unknown, but the fact that he's been announced so far in advance suggests it's fairly involved. One thing that has been kind of confirmed is that there is a rematch between Obi-Wan and Vader, which was teased by Lucasfilm's president Kathleen Kennedy at Disney Investors Day back in December of 2020. Concept art um, seemingly confirmed it will indeed be a lightsaber battle, showing the pair crossing laser swords. Why would you say laser swords in the article? It's lightsabers. Everybody knows that. Duh. Copyright. Uh, exactly. Uh, once more. And that if this in- is the case, then it'll break a Star Wars record. So, so far, Obi-Wan and Darth Vader have had two duels in Star Wars movies. Their fate fight, their fateful fight on Mustafar, say that five times fast, and then their rematch in the original Star Wars, which was technically the first, um, which saw Vader strike down his former master. Uh, Vader has also battled Luke in two different movies. Um, and then obviously you have Kylo Ren and Rey, who had three lightsaber duels as well, but only in two separate movies. So the idea is that if this happens, it's in three separate events. So that's why it's kind of like a, a big deal. It's like a hat trick of lightsaber duels. <laughs> okay. Hey, you know what? We'll take what we can get. Um, so, you know, so it, it'll be kind of cool to see, you know, where it, it takes this. So, you know, if, you know, so the rematch between Obi-Wan, you know, it can be this true lightsaber trilogy, um, which I guess was kind of, you know, only, you know, like a fabled thing in, in Star Wars, I guess is what the, the article, um, you know, talked about. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool to to see you know what really happened during this you know time away because i know i don't know you probably know a little bit more from books and comics and things like that so it'll be kind of cool to see if there is you know how epic this match really is is it you know going to be like the kick-ass darth vader that we got to see in rogue one or you know is he like kind of lame because it's been 10 years? I don't know. It'll it'll be interesting to see. Well, there's a video on YouTube that is a fan-made video mm-hmm. where they take a mashup of the original lightsaber battle from A New Hope between okay. Obi-Wan and Darth Vader. And they add enhanced CGI and enhanced stunt double um, video to it with okay. in concert and uh, in, in uh, costume and everything. And it, that becomes, that has become like the quintessential lightsaber battle between the two of them that everyone looks at now because let's face it, the, the lightsaber battle from A New Hope really was just so lame. It was, it was like two old men with walking sticks hitting each other. Well, cause they were two old men with Um, walking sticks at that point. But like you never got to see, even, even Luke's lightsaber battle with Darth Vader in Return of the Jedi. Mm hmm. Which was certainly more enhanced because he right. was flipping and doing, doing right, different right. things. You never really got to see what a Jedi could really do mm-hmm. in a lightsaber battle until the prequels came around. Right, right. Which was really one of the saving graces of the prequels was the, the realism of some of the lightsaber battles. Um, but this one that the, the, you know, this fan fiction that they put out was really what everyone hoped it would look like when right. Obi-Wan finally fought Darth Vader again. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested to see the battle itself. Right. That's less interesting to me than the circumstances under which they meet each other mm-hmm. 10 years later. Because the problem you run into is they've kind of painted themselves into a corner with the dialogue from A New Hope. Right. Where the last time, they say, the last time that we saw each other, you were the master, I was the apprentice. Mm -hmm. Well, clearly 10 years after Revenge of the Sith, that's not the case. So Mm -hmm. if they're seeing each other again 10 years later. Right. How do you? How do you justify that line in A New Hope? So that's kind of difficult. Yeah. Is it something where they, yeah, because he's going to know it's Darth Vader because we know he has to be in the suit by then. Right. 
you know. Right. He's in the suit at the end of Revenge of the Sith. Right. So, yeah. I don't know. So that's kind of the, that's that's one of the issues. The other one is that all the all the post uh, Revenge of the Sith storylines that came out between comics and novels with Obi Wan, he was on the planet. He never left the planet. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting to see under what circumstances he leaves the planet at this point in time because he's there on assignment to watch over Luke. Right? Did he take a vacation and they ran into each other at a resort? Well, and it also. <laughs> It also brings up the possibility of what kind of misadventures could Luke be getting into here that they could go off in a novel or something like okay. that about. Where he kind of goes to watch to make sure he doesn't right. get into trouble as a 10-year-old kid because he right. Luke's going to be 10 during this. So. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So right. it's it's interesting. It's I'm glad to see that there's more news coming out about this mm-hmm. because the you know, the press kind of went dead on this project for a little while. Right, there. right. Uh, so it's nice that they're breathing some life back into it. And we knew that Hayden Christensen was going to be making an appearance as Vader, but everyone assumed it was going to be some kind of flashback or something. Right, like that. right. Uh, so it would be cool to see Vader in that Rogue One role. Right. You know, or he, does. he doesn't know that it's Obi-Wan. Like obi one is in a disguise of some sort or something. Like I could see that being Well, it's possible that Obi-Wan doesn't know that Vader is, is Vader. Is Luke. That's true. Or is Anakin rather. Right, that's true. But that... because he never saw him in the right. full But in order to make the line from a new hope plausible, it has to be the other way around, like you mentioned. Right. Vader has to not know it's Obi-Wan. Right. And that so, could be because he could be dressed as a stormtrooper, or right. he uh, could be like I've taken a, a role of a bounty hunter or something right, like right. that. Although you don't see too many bounty hunters running around with lightsabers. Yeah, well, so that should be interesting. Mm-hmm. So, on the heels of that good news, tell us some bad Star Wars news. Yeah, so this is actually a story that has been kind of you know in the news. Are they going to fire her? What's going to happen? You know, it was back and forth. And finally, you know, Disney and and Lucasfilms finally took the axe and and chopped it. Uh, So news came out, obviously, this week that uh, Gina Carano has been fired from Star Wars The Mandalorian. She's obviously the character, uh, the actress best known for playing Cara Dune in the first two seasons of The Mandalorian, and she will reportedly no longer be part of the franchise's future. The news was confirmed on Wednesday night in a statement from Lucasfilm spokesperson revealing that Carano is not expected to return to the series' future seasons or to any future projects in the franchise. This comes after Carano shared several controversial and anti-Semitic posts on her social media with the backlash off, which led to the hashtag fire Gina Carano trending on Twitter. Um, so in the statement, they said Gina Carano is no longer currently employed by Lucas Films, and there is no plans for her to return in the future. Nevertheless, her social media posts uh, derogated peoples based on their cultural and religious identities and are, um, sorry, um, identities are unacceptable. Um, she obviously had a history of making controversial posts on social media, including expressing transphobic views and ident- um, identifying uh, the and den- I'm sorry and denying the the the, the <laughs> I can't talk. Um, uh, denying the um, the pandemic that was going on, and her recent posts caught quite a um, a lot of attention because they included anti-Semitic posts comparing current political climate to Nazi Germany. Um, she made her first appearance in The Mandalorian uh, season one uh, episode Sanctuary, and she grew to be a fan favorite in the first season. So, according to the Hollywood Reporter, Lucas Films had you know, wanted her to be part of the spinoff of um, one of the Star Wars, uh, the Star Wars uh, Rangers of the New Republic. Obviously, now they're going to have to look to either recast it or, you know, redo uh, 
her 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 part in it. Yeah, this is this is unfortunate. Like, you know, my take on this is you're entitled to your opinion. Mm-hmm. You can think whatever you want. The thought police aren't really out there to stop you from thinking. Right. My issue with this, and you're you're welcome to express those opinions. Mm-hmm. The problem is, is that when you express those opinions from the platform that your employer provides for you, mm-hmm. you're now exploiting that platform. Mm-hmm. Some people exploit it for good. Some people exploit it for bad. Right. The issue you have is at that point in time, you're representing that employer. Right. So if you're going to do something like that, you kind of have to be careful how you're going to express yourself. Right, right. Um, And, you know, I'm not debating whether what she thought or said was right or wrong. I I firmly believe that her position is amazingly ignorant and obtuse. Mm -hmm. But she has a right to express it. Right. In a way that does not reflect poorly on your employer. Right. Disney was well within their rights. I'm sure there was probably some level of uh, publicity clause or something like that that Disney has mm-hmm. with their talent that allows them to terminate contracts based on stuff like this. Right. It's unfortunate that this is what her thoughts are. Mm-hmm. And that was the thing because, it, it, again, like I said, this had been coming up. You know, I had been seeing stories on her for for months really and it was just kind of like eh, i don't you know and people were you know disney was standing by her saying yeah you know okay that's her and and that's what they were basically saying they were saying she has the right to to her opinion we stand by her you know and i think it was this was kind of the final straw it's like you started out here and it was okay you started out here it was okay then you went here and that was where they well, they and, had to, and really the to back thing away is, is that she does have quite a track record for making comments like this and there being a backlash mm-hmm. and the fact that you continue down that path without i wouldn't even say censoring but at least moderating your mm-hmm. your your messaging or she posts it and then deletes it right then why even post it in the first place, you know, if it's to the point where you have to post it and then take it down, then you probably shouldn't have posted it, sure. you know, to, to begin with. So. And really the real shame here is for the fans because mm-hmm. the character that she portrayed was a great character. Mm-hmm. She was a strong female lead. Mm-hmm. She was, it had the potential for being a role model for, mm-hmm. for young women all over the place. Right. And honestly, they could recast it. There's probably a, a number of actresses that could fill that role. It doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, you, need to you be her. Could. The problem that you have is because of what she did and what she said, it's associated with Disney, it's associated mm. with Star Wars, and it's associated with that character. Mm. So I think at this point in time, you've polluted that character to the point that you need to burn the character. No, because, you know, there was something that a, a friend of mine had had kind of posted and it it, it, it came from from somebody else. He had shared it and it talked about how, you know, like J.K. Rowling, she's obviously under fire for a lot of things. And, you know, so many people are like, oh, I'm never, you know, dealing with Harry Potter again because of her. And it was like, well, no, you can still enjoy Harry Potter for for what it was and all the lessons, you know, that it taught. You don't have to look at who the person was and they kind of said you can look at her character Cara Dune and what she stood for not the actress that played her so I I can see that but maybe they can do something to bring it so that it's not necessarily all about the actress that played her but more about the character obviously I don't think Star Wars has ever recast anybody you know well, leia was a, solo and that was a failure well that that was okay so that's like the one but like you know princess leia was always carrie fisher they've never you know right. obviously they had the cgi you know and luke has always been luke and you know they recast yoda and that was a failure yeah true they did kind of so, okay so they, they don't have a good track record right now. and the problem that you have is she embodied the character because the character required a certain type of of 
look, a right. certain type of demeanor, and a certain type of character. Yeah, you could definitely just kind of kill her off or just never talk about her again. That's why I think you got to burn the character and yeah. move on. Yeah. Ironically, had she played the lead role in The Mandalorian, you would have easily gotten away from it because you never saw her face. Right. True. True. Yeah. But the role she played, she was that character. Yeah. You can't continue on with that character, yeah. I don't think. Mm-hmm. Anyway, sad news, but we move on, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that was all we had for Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back with our entertainment news of the week. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. I will. I just have to now. Go for entertainment news. Uh, so this was some, you know, sad news that had, had come out actually the week before. Um, so Tony Bennett has revealed that he has Alzheimer's. Uh, in an interview with AARP, the singer, who was 94, uh, said that he was first diagnosed in 2016. According to the story, he has not yet experienced common symptoms like disorientation or uh, or episodes of terror, rage, or depression, but there is little doubt that the disease has progressed. Um, a neurologist uh, who had d diagnosed him uh, said that the singer has some cognitive issues, but multiple other areas of his brain are still resilient and functioning well. Uh, the doctor had said he is doing so many things at 94 that many people without dementia cannot do. He really is a symbol of hope for someone with cognitive with a cognitive disorder. Uh, in a tweet sharing the story, uh, Bennett had thanked the magazine and his family for their support. He said, life is a gift, even with Alzheimer's. Thank you to Susan and my family for their support and AARP, the magazine, for telling my story. Uh, his wife, Susan Crow, and their eldest son, Danny, uh, were also part of the interview. Danny said he had actually checked in with Lady Gaga, who is one of uh, his father's collaborator collaborators about breaking the silence about his diagnosis. He said, I wanted to check with her to make sure that she was cool with it because she watches his back all the time. And she was like, absolutely. It's just another gift that he can give the world. Um, Crow had explained that there have been challenges. Uh, she said, I have mo my moments and it gets very difficult. It's no fun arguing with someone who doesn't understand you, but I feel badly talking about it because there are so much more fortunate because we are so much more fortunate than so many people with his diagnosis. We have such a good team. Uh, Danny handles his business affairs and we have great doctors. Uh, the story actually also revealed that Bennett and God have a new album which is coming out following their 2014 album Cheek to Cheek. Uh, the album, which uh, the story states was recorded between 2018 and early 2020, is set for a spring release. According to his wife, Bennett uh, was already showing clear signs of the disease throughout the recording process, but spoke that you know, what the music means to him. Uh, she said, singing is everything to him, everything. It has saved his life many, many times through divorces and things. If he ever stops singing, that's when we'll know. Um, she also had said that, um, 
you know, there's a lot that I miss about him, but because he's not the old Tony anymore, but when he sings, it's he becomes himself again. So very sad, um, you know, to hear that, but it sounds like he, you know, he's doing well, right. you know, with it. it. It hasn't gotten, you know, worse to the point that, you know, he doesn't know who he is or he can't still perform and stuff. So, you know. Yeah. What surprised me about the article was I wasn't aware of the level of relationship that he had with Lady Gaga. Oh, yeah. And that was something that, you know, when they kind of got together in in 2014 it was like after that they were always together yeah. you know and and she was always there for him and and performing whenever she could with him and and they and i think that's when a lot of people kind of started to realize that she was as talented of a singer as she as she is you know she wasn't just this pop icon yeah. she w- she was a talented singer. She was a classically trained singer because of the two of them, you know, getting together. So yeah, that's nice. It's good to have someone like that, you know, who has your back. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Well, we wish him the best. Mm-hmm. Tell us about uh, one of our favorite actors, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah. So Jeffrey Dean Morgan says he's counting on returning, uh, reuniting with his supernatural uh, alum, uh, Jensen Ackles and Eric uh, Krimple in The Boys, where Ackles is going to be joining uh, the upcoming third season as Soldier Boy. So last January, uh, Krimple had offered Morgan a season three spot over Twitter, you know, when he had tweeted love for the, the television show. Uh, he said, you know, that he would go and play with that gang anytime. And then, you know, Morgan had also added that he would suit up in a heartbeat to, to be able to play with them. Um, and then it kind of went back and forth that they were in talks to try and get uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan to play. But obviously, COVID kind of screwed things up with, you know, with the uh, uh, being a reality. And then again, it kind of went back and forth. And he was like, okay, I'm ready. You know, let me know when. And then when it was announced that uh, Jensen was going to be uh, a character, Morgan was like, he's going to be awesome in it. He's going to be great. And then it seems that they were able to kind of work something out during the summer because the other thing was um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan was obviously working on uh, The Walking Dead because The Walking Dead had the whole 10 episodes that they were uh, filming over the summer to uh, to come out. So now it seems like something is definitely going to happen and don't know what his character is going to be, if it's going to be just little, you know, kind of a bit part thing, but it, it sounds like he, he is going to be part of it and we definitely became fans of of the show we're already fans of jeffrey dean morgan so this is just kind of another little cherry on top of you know this already big sunday that that we enjoy you know in the boys and of of all the people that you would think of for the boys he is probably the number one person that would be perfect. Oh, for I could totally show. see him, you know. And what would be funny was if he played like a good guy, right. you know, because. Like a good version of Deegan yeah, on the show. Yeah, that would be kind of, you know, kind of funny. But I hope he plays a bad guy too. So He would be yeah. a great compliment to the Billy Butcher character. Yeah, you know, like I could see that. Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like he comes in to kind of help. And but like and I want to see him with superpowers though. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. That would be awesome. Um, so Walking Dead will actually be returning for six new episodes uh, starting Sunday, February 28th on AMC. How exciting that is. Mm-hmm. And that was all we had for our entertainment news this week. We're yep. going to take a very quick break. We'll come back and we'll start with your insightful pick of the week. Okay. Okay. 
Go for your insightful pick. So my insightful pick this week is a Netflix series called Firefly Lane. Um, it features two best friends, Tully and Kate, and how they support each other through good times and bad times with an unbreakable bond that takes them from their teens all the way into their 40s. It's actually based off of a uh, novel of the same name. Um, and what's interesting is it's kind of, you know, your best friend, uh, gal pal story. Um, you see them meet when they're about 14 in the, in the seventies. And then the story kind of, you know, takes you to the, the present, which is actually 2003. Um, and then you, it goes to the eighties and you get to see them in college. And then, you know, it, it constantly goes back and forth, uh, throughout the decade. So you get to see them as kids, you get to see them in college, you get to see them, you know, in their twenties and then, you know, what they're currently going through now and, and back and forth. So, um, kind of reminiscent of, um, sisterhood of like the traveling pants or the ya ya sisterhood. So it's that, you know, that kind of chick flicky type thing. Um, but what's interesting is at the end of every episode, there's kind of like a little teaser, a little cliffhanger of something, you know, that happened in the present, but you don't know what it is. And, uh, there's 10 episodes in the season. Um, what I did find out was that the book is actually a little bit different than the series, where in the book they had one of the characters die. In the series, they kind of had so – they allude to somebody else passing away. So – um, there, ha nothing's been renewed yet for a second season, but they could obviously take it because there was a second book, um, in, in the series that, that came out. So it'll be interesting to see how they change it from, you know, how the, the book was. So, uh, you know, if you're into that, you know, chick flicky girl powerment thing, then I'm you'd totally probably, about that. I, I know, I know. It's totally you. <laughs> You're totally the audience for it. <laughs> All right. Good pick. Thank you. So my pick this week, strangely enough, I think this is week two or week three where it's not a documentary. Yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm roll here. So this week is uh, WandaVision on Disney+. Plus. Even though you hated it the first week. I'll get to that. Okay. Relax. <laughs> just, just saying. WandaVision is a blend of classic television and the Marvel Cinematic Universe in which Wanda Maximoff and Vision, two super-powered beings living idealized suburban lives, begin to suspect that everything is not as it seems. Now, as you said, I had wanted to feature this a few weeks ago, but to be perfectly honest, it had me scratching my head for the first three episodes, deciding if it, if it was worth recommending to the audience. Uh, the premise of the show was couched in nostalgic TV sitcoms, and there really seemed to be no rhyme or reason behind it. Uh, by episode four, some of the clarity starts to creep into the series, and it began to emerge as the Marvel Universe that we know and love. Each episode's loaded with Easter eggs. If you're careful enough to notice them, or like me, you cheat and read the summaries right. afterwards. Uh, some are related to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Some are related to the original comics. But almost all of them play a significant part in telling the story if you're smart enough to pick up on them. And that's really the tricky part. Mm-hmm. The show brings several tertiary characters together from other Marvel pro uh, projects in kind of a B-team style of a non-superpowered Avengers. So you get a character from Thor, you get a character from Ant-Man, you get a character from um, Captain Marvel, and they work together as a team. Right. Uh, kind of piecing things together and figuring out what the puzzle is. So we even had a cameo <laughs> appearance uh, by our in-studio model mixer, the Roadcaster Pro. That you were like more excited about that than <laughs> that was anything to me, the coolest thing is <laughs> is my mixer shows up in the show because it really it's a great piece of technology and it looks good. That's the important thing. <laughs> right. um, 
So yeah, the, the show's okay now. I, I think it's we're kind of moving in a direction that kind of doesn't have us speculating about everything. Because by the end of episode three, we just we had no idea what was going on. Right. And we were just sort of making. You know, what it struck me as like when the first Matrix movie came out, mm-hmm. and we found out that there was going to be a sequel to it. Everyone speculated on what the sequel was going to be, what it was going to address, what the origins were, and everybody was wrong. Right. And that was what I was afraid of with this, was that they weren't giving us enough to see where the story was going until episode four. Right. You you really needed to kind of just watch it and just let it right. simmer and just go. Because what was happening in the okay, episodes right. had almost nothing to do with the overarching plot in the right. first three episodes. Right. So they were literally like standalone little episodes. Mm-hmm. But now after, you know, episode four, episode five, those Easter eggs that were dropped in there make sense. Right. Um, one of the Easter eggs that they, they drop frequently is there's one or two commercials mm-hmm. that you get that aren't commercials. Right. They're commercials for the in-show TV show. Right. And there's always something subtle about that that's a Marvel-related Right, Message. and what was interesting, because like this week's episode, episode six, the commercial kind of didn't make any sense unless you go and you read some of these right. spoilers right. and you go, oh, okay. And you see that there is so much thought yeah. put into every little like there are thing layers upon layers mm-hmm. upon layers and some of the stuff that if you're not a diehard fan that read the comics religiously right. you're not you're gonna not get gonna... unless you read the summaries right and that's what i think is so great because they obviously did this for the diehard yeah. fans you know so you get the people that read every comic and go oh this is this episode you know this issue this blah 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 this you know they can tell you exactly it where this me was very similar to the level of detail that you get from the mandalorian to the point of we have one episode of the mandalorian yeah where this little r5 droid shows up and you happen to notice that the back of the r5 droid has you know a bunch of mm-hmm. burnt smudge on the back and you realize that it's the droid they carried over from a new hope you know that's the right. level of detail that was there and that's the kind of level of detail you're getting in the show yeah so i uh, it's definitely you know and i think that's the thing is that you know like obviously i'm a marvel fan but i never read any of the comics so there's a lot of stuff that's going over right. my head but i'm smart enough to kind of pick up hmm this this is something this isn't just well whatever what, what i know? like about it is it's it's enough in the show to spark me to go do the research yes. to learn the backstory. Right, exactly. So I've learned a tremendous amount from that mm-hmm. initiative itself. And if it's something that you've only watched the Marvel movies, there's enough to pick up right. on like different the, things. Like the, the B team that we get are all from Marvel movies. Right. So, you know, and that was something that where when we were watching it with our daughter, we would stop and kind of explain something right. to her. And she'd be like, oh, okay. And then certain things, you know, made sense to kind of help the story along. So, yeah. so WandaVision on Disney Plus streaming now. And we'll be right back with some afterthoughts. <laughs> Go with your afterthoughts. So this was something that that kind of uh, I saw a news article for our our local news that had talked about it. Um, And it is a pop up dining and sci fi experience. Uh, It is called Galaxy Burger Pop Up. And currently it is in Springfield, Pennsylvania. Uh, it actually goes until next week, um, February 21st. The dates were actually January 29th, uh, to February 21st. Um, and they have set times and you need a, uh, ticketed theme time, uh, a ticketed time, uh, to enter um this experience so think of um you know your favorite burger joint and a uh comic con kind of mashed together um so they have 
uh, time tickets every 30 minutes, and you have two and a half hours to experience the entire adventure. Uh, adventure. Um, so obviously they're doing the time tickets due to COVID uh, safety measures to ensure and also ensure that everybody has a fun and safe adventure. Um, so they basically allow you 30 minutes to eat and enjoy the restaurant and then two hours to kind of do the other adventures uh, and activities. Um so they have, uh, you know, the, the one ticket price was basically the galaxy experience where it'll, uh, gave you a sandwich, uh, a side and a drink. And then it gave you admission into the experience, uh, with additional photo opportunities. And it was running like $42. So when you think about how much, uh, a comic con is, uh, you know, to get in, most comic cons are like 50 bucks. So for less than that, you were also getting, uh, a burger and a drink. And then they had like a VIP experience that included, um, you know, a blue milkshake, um, along with a, a t-shirt, uh, as well. Uh, they also had a, a kid's, uh, price as well, which was $32. Um, but they had all of these different, um, artifacts that you could, uh, you know, take your pictures with. Um, it's being held, like I said, at the, um, uh, the, the Springfield mall in Springfield, Pennsylvania. And it's, you know, kind of a pop-up. And I think the idea is that they're going to kind of move it around. So I don't know where it's planning to go, you know, afterwards, but for somebody that's looking to go to, to a comic con and is missing that, you know, that experience, it kind of looked, you know, interesting, uh, you know, something to something different to do. Very cool. And that's one thing that we're definitely kind of jonesing for at mm -hmm. this point in the pandemic is missing out on, on some of these pop culture things that we enjoy doing. Yeah. It's nice that wizard world and, and, you know, San Diego comic con, you know, they're doing the, the, the zoom, calls yeah. you know they're doing those experiences so you can kind of get that aspect of it but to actually be able to physically go and see stuff that's that's what i know we're we're definitely missing absolutely so that was all we had today for the show um before we go i do need to plug the show a bit here uh if you're interested in subscribing we we highly recommend you subscribe so you get the show when it's available uh, eight o'clock on Monday mornings. If you're interested in the audio version, you can look for insights into entertainment. The video versions are listed as insights into things. And then it has all of our shows. We're available pretty much anywhere. You can get a podcast at this point, Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon, etc. Uh, we would also invite folks to reach out to us and give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We stream six days a week on Twitch when I'm not having technical difficulties <laughs> like I was this week at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, we are at insights into things. Uh, the audio versions of all of our podcasts are at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. You can catch high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. And our main site, which has links to everything, is insightsintothings.com. That's it. Another one in the books. Have a good week, everyone. Happy Valentine's Happy Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Mwah, 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 mwah. Insightful Podcasts. Thank you.